Welcome to Coffee and Conversation right here on Yachting International Radio. I am Ria, I am your host, and we are joined by Manda Beaver again, actually. This is the second time in a matter of the same amount of weeks, isn't it? Yeah, on a different topic, but actually one that's similar to what we were talking about the other day in the long term. So, yeah, my other um, passion in life, water. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, I was talking to Hannah and um, we were talking about all things sustainable and um, we touched briefly on water because that is a huge issue. The amount of water bottles that are going on to to yachts and, and in homes as well, because we've been sort of told for years that um, the water that is coming out of our taps is not a good source of water. Um, so the only option that we did have in general was water bottles. Um, so you see huge amounts of plastic going on to yachts. But a lot of yachts are taking the change and they're making a change. Um, as I said, I don't know anything about it. So can you tell me what type of different sort of um, abilities there are, what type of different filtration systems, what yachts can do or homes for that matter can do to change the consumption of plastic water bottles? Yeah, I'd love to, absolutely. So first of all, I'll just tell you a little bit about my story. Um, so everyone can appreciate how I got into this in the first place. Um, so as you all know, I'm a nurse and um, I've also done a lot of training in nutrition and natural medicine. So when I moved to the island, I'm originally from Tasmania, Australia, where we get amazing water from our streams. Um, you know, when I grew up, we had really great quality water straight out of the tap. Uh, the first place I lived overseas was first of all, on a yacht in the Caribbean that just used um, the water maker water and um, rain that they were catching because it was a cruising boat. Um, then I went to Switzerland and I did ski season. So, you know, basically in my travels, I was used to turning the tap on and drinking good water. Um, and then when I moved to Mallorca, I actually moved here with a really bad injury. Sorry, I'm losing my headphones. Um, I'd broken in a sailing injury. I'd um, cracked my sternum and pulled all the um, muscles in my chest wall off and then made it worse when I, go, when I thought it was really better, went and did CPR for an hour one night at the hospital and really inflamed everything. So when I moved to Mallorca, I came with a big injury and my husband was off and away and I was living um, up six flights of stairs in um, Mallorca and I, for the first time in my life, had to buy bottled water. And I was buying it, um, I mean, I'd, I'd bought it for a couple of boat trips once or twice, but I'd always been on boats that had filtered their water as well. So I was having to carry, you know, um, water up the steps because it was the first place I couldn't drink it. And, and I couldn't physically carry more than two litres at a time without being in agony. And so I started looking at ways to filter the water um, in my home. And first of all, I was boiling it. And when I'd boil it, I'd end up with this sea of sediment at the bottom because we have a lot of um, what we call total dissolved solids in the water here in Mallorca, which is from the calcium and the lime and the hardness of the water, which can actually be a good thing sometimes. You know, they're not necessarily the stuff we want to get out. Um, but then there's just so, you know, then there was so much chlorine. And I started looking into how to filter water. Um, and first of all, I got a Brit filter, the, you know, the basic $20 one. I hope it's okay to name some names here. And I found out that that didn't filter the chlorine out of water. And so Mallorca and a lot of the islands in the Mediterranean um, have been heavily farmed for a long time. And so we end up with a lot of E. coli, like AKA poo in the water. And then yeah. also when the houses were traditionally built, there wasn't a lot of forethought with um, microbiotes. So a lot of people, you know, when you look at people in the country, they've got their cistern where we, you know, catch the water, the rainwater, right next to the septic tank. And that's a huge problem because, yeah. you know, the microbes uh, are able to filter through the rocks and everything, the cisterns and the septic tanks are made of. So... Then to get rid of the E. coli from the, um, from the water that's going into the mains or the water that's going into our cisterns or well water or spring water, we end up with a really high amount of E. coli that then needs to be 
killed, which we use chlorine for. Now, chlorine is, a, and same with boat tanks. So another issue we have with boat tanks is that as we sail around the world, we're filling water up everywhere. And where does bacteria grow? In warm, moist, stagnant environments. So, you know, imagine a fish tank that isn't cleaned and doesn't have a pump. It's going to get pretty skanky pretty quickly. And I think our, um, you know, water, filled, water tanks of the future systems and um, boat tanks and wherever we catch the water should be clear. So you're constantly looking at it, you know, and going, wow, okay, we need a clean today. Um, and I don't know if they have pumps in, but something to aerate water and keep it fresh. But the problem we had when we sailed around the world is when we started filling up our water in, um, you know, countries where, which were warm, moist environments, which we couldn't control the water, we ended up with things like MR, MRSA, golden staff in the water as well and while sometimes we're filtering drinking water we're not filtering the water we shower in and so then we need to put a lot of chlorine in the tanks and chlorine is an indiscriminate cleaner so while it cleans out the e coli it also cleans out everything in your gut every all the nutrients so and when it's heated up so when we're showering in heavily chlorinated water it actually can um, form quite a toxic gas, which is why we have a lot of incidents of asthma and, um, you know, and allergies and skin problems like eczema, especially in children these days who are a little bit more sensitive because we're all showering in, in high volumes of chlorine. So back to my journey, I realised the Brita filters were actually made by the same company as Clorex and they kind of, um, didn't filter out enough chlorine tests. So, you know, I was just going and buying a chlorine tester from the pool shop and testing my water through different filtrations. And so then I started looking into water filters and what I needed. And we're in quite a unique um, area, especially in the Valerics. I mean, I know the UK has got a similar problem, but water hardness is another issue that doesn't, you know, that, that needs to be discussed because it's important here on the island and I think a lot of the time it's misunderstood. So first of all, a lot of us want to get the hardness out of the water and make it a bit softer um, because it's more pleasant to drink, while some of those minerals are really good. You know, ideally, we want to be drinking water that's equivalent to like a glacial stream. So, you know, glacial stream, the water isn't just coming, falling from the sky and going into a cistern or a tank, you know, and, and sitting there stagnant. It's running over rocks and it's moving. And water wants to be moving because it keep, keeps antioxidants in the water and, um, and it keeps it cleaner. And as we know from the fish tank, you know, we put a pump in a fish tank to keep that water moving. So water coming over uh, through a stream is going to be better than coming from a tank. Um, so we actually do want some minerals in the water and I definitely found when I did lots of sailing and was drinking reverse osmosis water or water maker water consistently without the minerals, I started ending up with a lot of joint pain and, um, and really needing those minerals, especially in the old days when we used to drink a lot of, um, eat a lot of um, packet, packaged food and dehydrated food and food that, you know, in the old days we didn't have the ability to carry so many vegetables with us, which, you know, now on boats you can. So if you're drinking water maker water without remineralizing it, it's okay if you're eating loads of fruit and veggies. I do not recommend drinking water that's from a water maker or um, reverse osmosis long term because it's got nothing in it. So H2O, which we, is water, is basically a carrier. It's designed to flow over the rocks and pick up little bits of magnesium and calcium and things that give water taste and more structure. So actually water that's drinkable should be H2O plus blah, 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 all the things that we want to keep it more. So alive. when we're talking about rehydration, it yeah. is the extra bits that actually rehydrate. It's not just the H2O with nothing in it that actually rehydrates your body. Yeah, that's right. So it's... Um, H2 on it, its own actually is more um, is more wanting to take um, minerals out of cells and replenish cells. So it, it, you do need a lot of um, electrolytes to stay rehydrated, 
which is why when you're dehydrated, when you've been seasick, when you've um, had gastro, when you're not well, you come into hospital or on the boat, you call us and we give you rehydration salts. When you look at rehydration salts, which, you know, we all need a lot of salts here in the middle of summer, you know, it, there's, it, it's all about the, the minerals in the salts. It's all about the electrolytes, isn't it? So um, that that's a little bit of another topic. But coming back to what we were talking about is here on the island, a lot of people want to take the hardness out of the water. So molecules like salt that we need to um, get out of the seawater to be able to drink it and calcium and magnesium, they're tiny, 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 tiny. Because when we look at water filtration, we look at the, everything in microns, you know, and the, the size of a micron. So, you know, one, in one piece of hair, you know, we can fit hundreds and thousands of like microns of calcium and sodium and all those things. So you need a really small filter to do that. That's why a lot of people use salt-based softeners, which add salt to the water, which so, like, you know, ba um, balances it out on, a, on an electrical scale, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and balances the calcium and the hardness of the water. But then you end up with salty water. Then yeah. you need reverse osmosis to get the salt out of the water as well to be able to drink it. And where yeah. a lot of people go wrong is they don't put a mineral filter after the reverse osmosis filter. So that's one way people can go about it that works. But I can't express enough the importance of putting in um, a mineral, a really good quality mineral filter to remineralize your water. It's really bad for children to be drinking reverse osmosis water. And, and reverse osmosis water is very similar in structure to water maker water as well. So then, okay, the next question we've got is how could we filter water um, and, and not worry about um, a water softener so you know and in saying that too I, I think in the near future they're going to become illegal they use a lot of water a lot they create a lot of waste and um, you have to import salt you know I don't know anyone here that can runs a, a water softener with salt that's from the island most of them are importing the salt from China so then there's you know a whole massive you know um, carbon footprint there as well um, and in in a few in a few countries around the world, they're starting to become outdated um, and and illegal even because they do create a lot of waste. As do reverse osmosis filters. And in saying that too, sorry, I am gonna I am slightly not against <laughs> reverse osmosis. And let you know, I think it's great in war zones. Um, there's you know in we do sell. Um, you know, a, a couple of companies I work with, we do sell reverse osmosis units um, with hydration salts of people that are roaming around the world that are doing, reg, you know, that aren't doing regattas in just one place or not based in one place. But when I've done aid work, we carry a reverse osmosis maker because you can actually, you know, in, in really good ones, you can turn Coca-Cola back into water because they, you know, they're so good at what they do. So in Haiti, you know, in our, you know, in um, in Africa and places like that where the water quality is really good, that's your only option. We're not, you know, that dire here, I believe. So the other option is, is how do we filter our water and get out some of the hardness to protect our um, our kidneys somewhat, um, and but mainly our devices. So I'm looking at my kitchen. Um, the, you know, the problem a lot of people will have here is they're going through lots of um, dishwashers and washing machines and appliances. You know, that's why, you know, kettles, you look inside your kettle and, you know, it drives people mad. It's constantly going all white and you have to put the vinegar in or your coffee machine, you know, and you have to decalcify it constantly. So we want to get water that can come into our property and keep our devices safe and not be too high in those minerals. So then we can look at different options of reducing the stickiness of the calcium um, and there's a few different options there that you can use. Next, what we want to talk about is how we filter our drinking water and then we need um, something like a sediment filter, especially if you're running off um, from wells and um, natural water sources. And even here, my, my, at my, I live in Calvia, which has got some of the best water in the island. 
Um, my water here is uh, on the mains. Um, and even, you know, that goes around really quickly. You know, some con I'm often changing my sediment filter. Next, we want to go into a micron filter, a carbon block filter. So charcoal carbon is one of the, the most traditional antimicrobials and filter systems ever. You know, for example, in the medical kits, we used to put charcoal in. Um, when in a natural medical kit, when people are travelling around the world and get tummy aches, I'm always saying take a charcoal tablet, you know, to reduce um, the bugs in there. So, you know, charcoal is a really good medium at, get, at filtering things. So a carbon block filter, a good one's normally made by um, carbon that comes from coconut husks that have been burnt and then put in a filter. Um, the other option is, or as well, is a ceramic filter. So ceramic filters have been used for over 700 years um, and they, you know, goes through a, a ceramic filter that sometimes has a carbon filter inside um, and the ceramic filters have really small microns. So, you know, you want to get down to a, as little as 0 0.5 microns, which gets rid of pathogens, um, chlorine, um, yeah, um, viruses, all that sort of stuff. So it's giving you a nice water um, and, and getting rid of all, all the junk as well and ends up making it quite a safe drinking water. Um, and then sometimes I'll put just another carbon filter at the end that just is there to improve the taste once it's all gone through there. So you can have as little as one, like I have one by my um, sink here that's a Dalton um, anti it's a Dalton filter that's what the old you know Fairy Dalton's been making ceramic products for years sorry I don't want to name drop I don't actually sell these filters myself um, that this is just one of the best ones that I've found so far um, and it does three in one so it's a little filter that I travel with as you all know I travel loads um, I take it travelling with me. I use it on my sink at home before my ionizer. And what that does is um, it gets rid of some hardness, so it protects my kettle. It also gets rid of, um, it's got a carbon block inside, so it's got an anti-scale carbon block surrounded by ceramic. Um, and that filters down to 0 0.09 micron, which makes it a really effective filter. Um, it's super cheap. And it, you know, it, it goes with me everywhere I go. Because of the hardness here, it does get a little, you know, it's supposed to last six months in a normal home. Mine lasts three months and then I scrub the outside with a Brillo pad and re refresh it. And I can normally keep it going for six months. But I also have a really simple whole house filter out the front of my house, which I've made with a, um, myself, just using stuff from a local hardware store because I wanted to test how easy it was to use my own filter system that was less than 100 euros, um, which Brilliant. I found by just using stuff from Leroy Merlin, myself, and um, that is an anti-scale filter, a set, um, sediment filter, a carbon block filter, and a ceramic filter um, that are all outside the house and from the mains. And now what's really important to notice in filters is when you see a cheap filter, there's one of two things going on. So why filters range in price is a good filter is all about having small microns, you know, so it, lead, it filters out more junk with a high flow rate. And that's where, you know, people can go and buy cheap filters, but we're all in a hurry these days and we're all busy these days. And I need to know, I don't even have children yet, but I've got four animals and a beautiful husband and a whole, a lot of plants, <laughs> yeah, 10 cats and 20 pot plants, <laughs> not really that many cats, but, you know, that I've got to water every morning before I go out the door. I can't be there for um, 10 minutes filling up a litre bottle. I need to turn it on, fill it up in a minute and, be out, and then a few dog bowls and a watering can um, because it's, you know, my plants and my vegetables and my aloe vera and my animals and my husband all deserve the best hydration I can find because our bodies are like 90% water, right? So 
water should be more important than supplements and diet than you know practitioners well, it's natural part i mean our bodies are made up of what 90 some odd percent water anyway so we have to make sure that we're replenishing ourselves and that's why i can't believe that people don't prioritize water you know i know some some of the most cutting edge people i know that go to the gym every day and yoga and they live on green smoothies and they're all about this special diet and they spend two hundred dollars on supplements a month or whatever and then they drink I, you know they i'm at barbecues and they're like oh yeah I, i've really got to stop drinking plastic water and i'm like I've got to, i don't even know if i can be friends with you anymore if you are like i find it really embarrassing for people when i go to their houses and they i see them like really embarrassingly like pour me a glass of water from some crappy you know plastic bottle that they're then going to throw in the rubbish when you know and and then people say oh, i can't afford a decent water filter at the moment like well how much are you spending on plastic water? And don't yeah, that was the question I was going to ask. Yeah, you know, I'm a someone that suffered a large degree of. Um, uh, I haven't spoken about this that much on social media before, but I came to the island having had cervical cancer. Um, I've had a lot of reproductive illness in my past, um, and. And Cheryl Clark Crow, who was quite a famous singer, you know, in our day growing up, most of you watching this probably don't even know who she is, but she claims that she got breast cancer from drinking warm bottled water from, you know, the car, you know. The, and I saw someone, in fact, I'm seeing people do it every day. When I leave the beach, you see families get back into their car. I saw a woman just an hour ago take a Evian bottle off the dashboard it would have been 50 degrees and pass it around all her children. And I was just like, oh, God, you're just filling them full of plastics. And, and well, when you think them. about it, I mean, the, the, the kind of heat that we're having here right now, um, you can cook an egg on the sidewalk. So you can imagine what that's doing to a plastic bottle in direct sunlight. I mean, you are literally melting plastic right into the water that you're drinking. So, Absolutely. And not you know, even yeah, that. The whole like, idea. Even if you don't, you keep it in a cooler. And you've had it at the beach and it's still cool. How yeah, I find it fascinating going past shops and like in the polygonos or the industrial areas, seeing the water storers. Like I know a lot of people think that those big five litre plastic things that you turn upside down and run through a cooler and no offence to anyone that's got one, but have you seen them in the polygonos out in the 50 degree sun for days and weeks yeah. on end? You know, yeah, you don't think that about that. You don't think from. about the starting point of these things. You think about, you know, you see it in your kitchen or in your living room and it's standing there on its stand and you're getting your hot water, your cold water out of the machine, but you don't actually think about how it's been shipped and where it sat before it got into your living room or your kitchen. And that's another thing on filters too. You know, I've been to friends' houses that have those filters or similar ones that run over rocks and things. And there's, you know, where does bacteria grow? Let's go back to the fish tank again. The warm, moist, stagnant water. That's what a, a water canister is, you know. So it's going to be gathering bacteria. And I've been to so many people's houses where I can see a layer of slime on the inside of that water filter. Yeah. Or another option is, is that, or thing to talk about that breaks my heart is you see people doing it nearly right like I was down at the docks this morning, um, yesterday and there was all these people that had water filters going into their boat that were kind of doing it right. They'd gone to the local hardware store and they brought the most basic water filter, which sometimes the choice of filters in there cracks me up too. But then there's this clear container that's like the housing for the water filter that sat there with water in it and the filters in it and so it's gathering bacteria um, and bacteria, you know, how's it going to get, like that water is going to get warmer faster because it's a clear container. Mm -hmm. And then the waters are sitting, the filters are sitting in there not moving and there's water not continuously moving through the filters. So bacteria is going in there. So then you end up with a water filter that's actually contaminated with bacteria that's worse for you than drinking out of the tap which is at yeah. least continuously running. So well, I think I think the biggest problem is, is that people don't really understand water. I mean, we, uh, you know, sort of the ways it works and, and how it for us and what we can do to make sure that we're 
replenishing ourselves with the proper kind of water. Um, and and I, I don't think a lot of people really want to know per se, you know, because it's really complicated. Um, and I think what they would like to know is what can I do that's easy? And the idea too is, as you said earlier, that if you're not buying those plastic water bottles over time, whatever amount of money you put into a darn good filtration system, you're going to be saving in the long run. Oh, totally. You know, so I don't think personally that what setup I've got is that expensive at all. Um, at the moment, I, I use a series of filters that are all pretty cheap in my mind, considering, you know, I saw somewhere a beautiful quote that we're basically cucumbers with anxiety. I'm 90% water. <laughs> that, yeah. you know, oh, and that's another option that I had to look into, like for my healing, was that. Our brain is 90% water. When you know what happens when you're hungover, you feel terrible because you're dehydrated. So for me to get better quicker, for me to recover from my injuries quicker, I needed to flush out my brain. I needed to flush out my cells because every time our heart beats, our cells contract, and that's when we want to get the waste out, and then they expand, and then they pull in the water. So we want that water to be of the highest possible quality. So, yeah, going back to your question is how we can sort ourselves out. First of all, at least get a travelling water bottle that you can fill up everywhere you go with a read that's got really good reviews and a really good simple um, bit of, um, uh, what's it called, ceramic filter or carbon block filter inside. Um, Sawyers make great products. Life Straw makes great products jump on Amazon, have a look around, um, and, yeah, you know, they're, they're just a couple. I use them everywhere. So when I'm travelling, um, I've got my life straw with me all the time and I've got two, one that's a water bottle, one that I can just drink straight out of any cup anywhere, and I will use the, the water on the planes. You know, um, most planes these days have a water filter. I have even filled, up, filled it up, you know, from a muddy... Um, a mud, really muddy puddle in a in a farmland with cows everywhere, mm. and I filled up the water and, yeah. Yeah, and filled it up in there. Then um, drained it out and sent it off to the lab for analysis to make sure that it was getting out what it you know that it does what it said on the pack, and it was basically returning water to source. So it was amazing. So first of all, I brought that water filter for I think sixty US or something. For me, that's super cheap. And, you know, especially in an airport when a bottle of water is $5, you know, yeah. you don't have to worry about that. And another thing that is coming back in that I'm seeing a lot now is the water fountains. But then, you know, I am slightly conscious of them coming from a nursing background and understanding hand washing, being one of the biggest contaminators in the world. And I don't really want to be in Dubai Airport or in a really heavy traffic airport or Mallorca for that exact drinking out of a, a, a mouth fountain that 100 people would have used in the last hour. But I would quite happily fill up my water filter water and then drink out of that. So, yeah. boom, that's the first thing. The second thing is to at least get a point of use. I kind of work backwards, you know. So I got my water drinking bottle first, then my point of use. So at least on my um, main faucet or tap at my sink, I'm constantly getting fresh water, that, and that's just got the um, the ceramic slash carbon filter there. So I always have that. I personally have that plugged into a water ionizer. I'm a huge believer in Kangen water. Um, I've used it for years, and for me, that's just adding more um, electrical charge to the water. It's making the water molecules have more hydrogen um, and easier to be. Um, it turns the water, it gives the water antioxidant properties and makes it taste better. And loads of the boats um, also have ionisers on them um, that make the water taste better and it gives it some electrical charge like, you know, um, a, a, a glacial lake that's been hit by lightning. It sounds weird, but it's actually the way nature intended us to drink our water and, and keep water really pure and beautiful and, um, and it just tastes better. It tastes so much right. better and it's so much better for the body. But that, that's, um, you know, that, that's the next stage that, you know, people 
need to start appreciating water again and loving the taste of water. And for me, you know, everyone calls it Manda's Magic Water and wherever I go, I take it and everyone tastes the difference. Everyone's like, oh, my God, that's kind of sweet. That's kind of amazing. But, you know, that's that that's um, when you start getting really into your water and, and, and you really want to make a difference. Um, there's also different um, pHs on there so you can clean. You know, the 2.5 pH it makes is the biggest FDA um, recommended or the only FDA recommended cold water cleaner in the world. It gets eight, rid of HIV, tuberculosis, um, norovirus, some of the trickiest microbiomes in the world. Um, it, it cleans up like in one one swoop. It's amazing. So, I yeah, I'm sort of into that for medical purposes as well. Going back, um, then also if you own a house or you're renting long term, I highly recommend getting a whole house filter. So you know, as I said, I'm trialing one at the moment that I went and got from a local hardware store where I've just got some polypropylene, um, which is an anti-scale medium then a sediment filter, then a 10 micron carbon block filter that has a high flow rate. So because I'm on town water, it's not slowing down the flow of the water. It's not making my shower, you know, less powerful or anything like that. Yeah. Um, and then I've got another 5 micron carbon block filter on there um, that makes the, makes the water taste nice. So if I want a glass of water in the middle of the night, I can safely go to any tap in my house and drink out of it. You know, about down at the point of use, down at the sink, I've got, you know, the premium water because now it's going through the, the ceramic and then the ionizer. And that's effectively the same system most boats have set up. So what you need to do, what people need to think about on their boats is the source of the water, is the first of all the condition of their tanks, as do the people at home with the cisterns and drinking basically tank water. Um, so they have to, you know, think about how close is that to the septic tank, um, you know, to your black water. And right. then you've got to think about um, keeping it clean. And then you've just got to think about, well, what it, and then we've got to think about our pipes and the condition of our pipes. A lot of us are in old houses that have got rusty pipes or, you know, pipes that have got, the, you know, that might be corroded or whatever. And so it, you could have the cleanest pond or cistern or boat tank in the world, but then you might have bad pipes leading to the tank, right? So um, it's like you have to have you have to have um, a filter at the beginning at the source, um, but it's also wise to have a filter at the end result as well. So you're yeah. filtering it twice is, is probably the wisest way to go about that. Absolutely, and you can seriously do that. Um, you know the system I've got here. With not deep, without counting my ionizer, my Kangen water machine, with the whole house filters and then the point of use filter, I have deliberately not spent any more than 200 euros setting that up. And so right. that's like not much when it comes to filtering water. So, well, I'm imagigning though, I mean, as far as the yacht water. goes, sorry, as far as the yacht goes they're not going to be wanting to do like a homemade solution. They're going to want a system that is strong enough, built well enough, especially if we're talking about 50 meters plus, we've got, you know, a crew or, or however many plus the guests, we want a system that will just take care of everything that needs to be taken care of. Um, and we have good water. What roughly a good proper system, um, what would that roughly cost generally? Um, well, it depends. The ones I recommend go from anywhere between 1,600 euros up to probably 5,000 because I believe the Kangaroo Water Ionizer is the best in the world and that everyone should have one because it tastes, makes water just taste, taste so amazing and delicious. But So that's what I recommend. Um, so then at the point of use, they have a ceramic filter um, as a pre-filter to the Kangen filter that's got a carbon block filter in it. And then they, it runs over my um, the platinum plates, which is, you know, like silver, which is one of the oldest antimicrobials in the world right. and gives it its charge. But you have to have something at the point of use for drinking taps. There's also Seagull's a really popular, um, popular um, filter that a lot of people recommend. It's a really basic carbon block filter. Um, that's heavily marketed to yachts and yachties. It makes the water taste really nice. 
in our experience, when we went around the world, um, we had a seagull, but we found it actually corroded a little bit because we were on a sailing yacht and doing some pretty big races. And it was quite expensive to replace the filters and not so universal. So sometimes mm. we were spending a lot to ship that particular filter from the states around the world, you know, because maybe we didn't plan right. enough ahead and take enough with us. Um, or you could do the point of use reverse osmosis with a really good quality mineral stick. And then obviously there's a few professionals around too that have really good solutions as well. So, you know, there's um, there's a few companies here that specialise in water and most of the engineers now are making really good water for the boats, really good water, you know, and, and there's a real interest there growing in the water. A lot of them just aren't quite confident to nail it at, at the point of use. You know, they're not just, they're just not, someone on the boat just isn't quite trusting that, you know, that they can totally clean that water up at the point of use. But I'd like to say that I believe it's really simple. And I know so many boats that are doing it. Um, and, and it's education as well. And it's just educating. A, a lot of people think that water from a plastic bottle is better. We, we know there's a lot of owners. Um, and yacht crew out there that still sort of believe in plastic waters and those brands. And it's about busting those myths and educating them and saying, do you understand that when, you know, that water is heated up over 36 degrees, you're, the, the water bottle is breaking down and you're effectively yeah. drinking estrogens. Why do we have so many health problems in the world these days? Why are girls getting periods at the age of eight? Why are boys growing man boobs? Why are women experiencing so many um, estrogen-based cancers in the reproductive system and the breast? Why are men having, you know, so many issues? Why are we having so many issues with fertility? It comes down to estrogens, which comes down to the food, you know, how we package and 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 sell foods, but mainly like plastic water bottles as well. And we can like, um, and then that, you know, that also affects learning disorders and. The brain and how the brain works you know because you don't once again those um, plastics those estrogens they're tiny and we haven't actually got to a point in the world where we're really researching that we don't know what the long-term health effects of our children drinking plastic really is because they're gonna be that's gonna show up then you know yeah. we all actually grew up on really safe water before we ended up with a lot of the um before we polluted know, the entire water system exactly you know yeah. we're, we're the, you know the, the golden age so we're not actually sure how it's going to look in the future it is hard to find research you know i am as many of you know very much into my science science-based evidence-based practice um and that's why i like to make you know try and be the devil's advocate anytime I start looking into these things. I want to see scientific research. If you Google like what the problem is, you know, with drinking plastic contaminated water, it's hard to find research on that um, because yeah. it's also heavily combated by the by the um, water bottle companies as well. So it, it's tricky. We do need to. I would rather drink tap water than bottled water. You know, I yeah. when I'm on tour. Um, if something happens and I want, like last time I went away on, on a tour around Europe, I stupidly left my water bottle sitting on the bench at home. I, um, and I, I was glad I did it because I had to consider what, what am I going to do this week? You know, am I going, I tried to buy something along the way. It was impossible. And I was, I was like, oh my God, I got, I felt hungover drinking the bottled water that the boat I was on was providing me with, you yeah. know? Um, I it wasn't meeting your needs, obviously. I just think I'd rather drink beer, and I don't actually like beer. So, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> um, yeah, I could go on and on and on. But I just think it's up, you know, every, every one of us, if you, if you are drinking plastic water bottles, you know, you're endangering your health, you're endangering the environment. And we just don't know what's going to be the long-term effects of that. And if you have any health problems, if your children have any asthma, any eczema, any learning disabilities, you know, 
Um, if you're suffering with an irritable bowel syndrome or, um, or you know, ovarian cysts or any kind of health problems at all, you know, if you're if, if you've got rashes, if you've got bad skin, you know, it all goes back to water. And and so look at the source. Look at how you're feeding yourselves. Every cell in your body deserves the best water filtration, whatever. Mother Earth, you know, the first thing we can do for Mother Earth right now is reduce our plastic waste. Yeah. And well, I, I think the biggest thing that we have to be aware of is that it's not – Yes, the plastic is bad, but we're not talking about the fact that this plastic is harming the environment. We're actually talking about something that is keeping us alive. And yeah. we need to make sure that what we're putting into our body, I mean, and you know, you were talking about it earlier, the fact that you have these people that are paying so much money for supplements and you know, they're, they're athletes and they take care of their bodies like it's a temple and then they drink bottled water. And yeah. at the end of the day, it's like, but that's doing absolutely nothing for you. So you could be eating all the best ingredients on the face of the planet and have a completely vegan lifestyle if that's what you so choose. But if you're not actually drinking water that feeds your system, then there's no point in any of it. Uh, look, I totally agree. And, um, you know, that's the other thing is that the water bottle industry isn't regulated. So tap water is heavily regulated. In most countries, water bottles aren't heavily regulated. And so in some countries, they're just tap water. In yes. other countries, they're just reverse osmosis water. And another thing we need to consider when we look at minerals, I see a lot of people thinking that when they look at the water bottle and the list of minerals on the back, that that is sufficient. Now we've also got to, what we've got to understand is like at the big at, at the um, you know the water uh, municipal water supplies when people are making water they're not getting magnesium or calcium from the water running over rocks in a glacial stream or coming if you're from Mallorca from um, you know Galazzo running over the stream yeah. down to our point of use or our cisterns those inorganic substances are being poured in. And so they're man-made magnesium, they're man-made calcium, and they actually yeah. have a different kind of structure. And yeah. I've spoken to people in Australia that work at municipal water um, institutions, and they will adult the, adult the water, like completely change it as and when how much they want people using the water. So when we're in drought, they are adding extra man-made inorganic lime into the water to make it taste bad. So we'll go and buy a bottle of water to keep our water supplies at a decent level and enough for us to use for industry and showering and, and cooking and, and watering gardens and things like that. So it's not just like the water coming out of the tap, it's what they're doing to the water before it even gets to our tap, you know, that we have to be you know mindful of. I think none of us, and myself included, had any idea or any concept how extremely complicated the whole issue of water is because, you know, it's like you said too, when I was a kid, I grew up in northern British Columbia, Canada. Um, we had well water, but that well water was fed from a, a glacier stream that came right off the mountain. Um, yeah. and, and so you just don't think about it. Like you really, honest to God, you don't think about it. Um, yeah it's just something that's there and it's always there. And we worry about not having water. That's, you know, we, we worry about the plastic bottles it's in or not having it. We don't worry about the water itself essentially. And yeah. I think we need to take a little bit more time and do our own research or talk to people like you who do know all the ins and outs, obviously. Um, and something that I think what we can do yourself and myself is, is maybe if you can provide me with, you know, recommendations as far as filtering systems, you know, the bottle that you have that you take everywhere with you on your travels, um, filtering systems for the yachts, filtering systems for your home. If we can provide that to the public, maybe, you know, that will just make it easier for them to make a choice in a different direction and not only healthier for them, but healthier for the environment. And the other thing I'd like to say is don't let my passion um, overcomplicate it because it comes back to being really simple. The answer is really simple, just filter your water. And work, yeah. don't, don't, I see so many people that come to me and say, oh, 
we've just moved house, we want to get a whole um, house filter and maybe I overcomplicate it with all this knowledge I've got. You know, I mean, I came into this when I was learning about this, I was also doing my master's in international and public health and I was, you know, studying water at the time. So I went into it from a very academic, you know, need to know kind of standpoint and you don't need that information. You don't need to know all of that. All you need to do is grab a drink bottle that filters water and have at least one water filter in your point of use um, that's at least a ceramic or a carbon block filter that's going to adequately um, filter the water, you know. Yeah. And um, we'll put some information on the bottom of this thread. Um, with Yeah, but it doesn't have to, I just want to emphasise, it doesn't have to be overcomplicated. Just get a basic water filter um, and, and, a, and a one you carry, a portable one you carry around with you. And then when you can and when you can afford it, get something for the whole house. Keeping in mind, I've done that for 200 bucks and I'm really happy with the results. Yes, I can spend more and the one I normally use and the one I want to use, um, you know, costs a bit more. So, but it, it's really, it can be really simple. Yeah. It can be as simple as just going and all those people at home that, you know, husbands are away on boats and, um, you know, don't have anyone to plug it in. The, the ones I'm talking about, they just simply screw into the tap. It's just like boom, 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 getting the right fitting. Or if you have to, call a plumber and for like 50 bucks or something, they'll do it for you or a handyman. It is, it, it can be that simple, you know. So don't be like, oh, well, next year or in three months when so-and-so gets back, I am going to, you know, get this proper system put in. You know, whatever proper system you get put in, you're still going to want small microns at the point of view. So just get go out and get it today. So basically, whatever you can do is a step in the right direction. And yeah. as long as you're stepping away from water bottles and plastic bottles that are damaging not only to your health, but to the environment, you are making a good step. And, yeah. you know, in time, if you can afford to go to a larger system or you prefer to go to a larger system and you want to go even more complicated, you can do that but it's yeah. a step-by-step -step process and it's very easy. I mean, someone like you, they can just give someone like you a call and say, I mean, you know, we were talking about the complication of it and I think it's really important that we do hear someone like you speak about it because then it really does hit home. Like for myself, um, it does sound really complicated, but I'm glad that I, I've heard now because now it really does make more sense to me why we are making sure that we filter this water, why we are making sure that we have more than one source of, of filtering, you know, the outside of the house and the inside of the house, because there's no way that you're going to be able to go through all your pipes and make sure that everything isn't, you know, is clean and not rusty and what you can't do that. So to have a filter from the outside and a filter on the inside before it actually goes into your body makes perfect sense. Um, so, you know, I think everybody needs to take even just the tiniest step on their own and the yachts as well. I mean, it's fairly simple then. They can do exactly the same as you suggested. They can put something on their taps, you know, at, at the source, can't they? Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So there's a, you know, I'm on boats all, all the time. And first of all, to most of you yachties out there, I'm so impressed. For example, um, five, four years ago, five years ago, I started doing the water at the Super Yacht Cup. And in those days, I had um, I had my home filter set up. That was basically what I'm talking about. You know, something really simple that I bought from Nevo Merlin, um, or about, or you know, one of those, um, you know, uh, hardware stores. Then I had my Kangen water machine, the ionizer, and I was filling up like 600 liters, you know, in an hour or two, and then taking it to every boat. So I was taking them like 60 liters, which I calculated was enough for like 20, 30 crew out racing for a few hours, hand delivering it to them because, you know, yachties are kind of special um, and they they like things hand delivered. And each, you know, I didn't do it last year. There's another awesome, um, you know, there's a whole bunch of really cool people. I think um, the Clean Wave guys are some other people that yeah. are doing really great stuff and they were doing the water there last year, I think, and um, they just had a huge thing there that they could go and fill it up um, and there was someone else. There's a whole bunch of people doing it there. There's someone else, um, I can't remember their name, but they have a really great system too. But they didn't even need to be delivering it to people. And pretty much most of the competitors there were self-sufficient. 
they had something from as little as a little, you know, seagull, a little carbon block filter to, you know, a, a fully engineered process of copper filtration and ionisation. But, you know, going around and talking to everyone, it was awesome. You know, the boat I was on had a full, full um, system and, you know, everything was going really well there, really easy. So as I've gone through the years, I'm seeing so many people that do have really good systems. Every now and then I'm on a boat that started off with good intentions and um, and have gone black back to plastic water. But um, I think I, I know that, you know, when I'm doing my medical training on the boats, I know someone hands up me some water and it's a, an Evian bottle or something. Like I don't even have to say anything. They're kind of like, I know, I'm so sorry. Like we're going to get <laughs> but They know you. <laughs> doing really great. And um you know, and the um, the environmental associations around the awareness, the plastic cleanups, um, people, you know, so many people are really interested in their family's health and wellness these days. Um, you know, so I'd like to point out that the changes I've seen in the last few years have been phenomenal. But, yeah, if you're not filtering your water, you're a bloody idiot. Just do it. You, and you'll save so much money and and people's lives. See, I think, too, when you're talking about the yachts, it comes down to cash as well for the owners. You know, the owners are saying we want we want bottled water because we've been sold from the media's perspective and from marketing perspective that bottled water is the best for us, as per se. Um, and when somebody comes to them and says, well, why don't we buy this, you know, this this machine that will filter all of our water to to the levels in which it needs to be filtered and it's going to cost you five thousand euros or six thousand euros. And the boat owner goes, oh, my goodness. But if what they did is they presented it to the boat owner saying it's going to cost 5,000 euros, but in a year, this is how much money you're going to save. The boat owner might be more than willing to say, okay, go ahead, because sometimes it just comes down to cost, doesn't it? Oh, look, I, most, of the, um, most of the boats that I've provided my solution with, um, they, you know, I know one of the boats, um, the, the chef, she actually kept it a secret, the water ionizer, a secret from the owner for a while and kept it down in her cabin where she was filtering the water and she was, you know, carrying these um, non-labeled um, glass containers of water up to the owner every day but, you know, not making a point of, and she would paid for the filter herself. And then he tasted the water and he was like, oh, my God, this tastes like the, you know, water average of a stream from, you know, my, you know, my, my, my farm in the mountains in Alaska or New Zealand or something like that. And then within a year she was able to say, so, you know, that water I've been giving you, you know, we paid for that filter in one, in, you know, one season because normally we're buying however many water bottles a week, you know, say 150 Yep. Um, you know, I know at this time of year, the people that are working on deck are often going through three litres a day. And yep. not to mention how many of those water bottles, I know when we're racing, it used to drive us mad how many of those were never finished. You know, they get hot in the sun and then they're just left lying around and no one's put their name on it. And they're all just either going into the coffee machine or most of the time down the drain and into the rubbish and then to landfill, you know, which is just to me... A, a, a crime like you wouldn't yeah. do it with beer or wine so why would you do that with water that's more expensive in most countries yeah. so you know most of these solutions you know require a bit of uptake but not only that they're saving bats you know the, the, the girl I'm talking about now she was like any chef or stewardess that doesn't have to be carrying 150 bottles of water a week up and down the passerelle, up and down the dock, carrying it in and out of cars is saving her back, is saving, you know, um, you're hours. You're saving gas, work. you're saving time, you're saving all sorts of things by just and having money. the water filtered. Yeah. It's yeah. insane. But I, I, I guess it, it takes somebody knowledgeable on the boat, and you don't even need a huge amount of knowledge, obviously. You Just enough to know that look, this is what we're saving if we purchase this system and we use this system. It's not only better for us, it's better for the environment, it's better for our bottom line. Um, yeah. And that's the three things that they need to focus on in order to get that change made. And it's fairly simple if you just put it in those terms. Yep, I think so. Yeah, I think so too. But you know what? I am so glad that you came on board with me today because 
I knew that you were into water and I knew that you knew your stuff, but I actually didn't know that you were that uh, sort of knowledgeable about all things water. That just kind of blew me away. I, I learned so much today and I really do appreciate your expertise because now I'm going to go out and share this information and probably misinform most people because I only, you know, really understand half of it. <laughs> um, I just like to say to finish up, like, so how this began as well for me is one day we, as most of you know, I've got an emergency background working in ED for 20 years or so. And one day, you know, I had a patient that came in, they were really, really ill. I put them on the drip, I gave them some oxygen. And then, you know, an hour later, they're like, oh, I'm better now, I can go. Thanks, doc, you fixed me. And I was like, oh, we, you haven't actually, I'm a nurse and you haven't even been seen by the doctor yet. And he goes, well, what was, you know, whatever you put in that bag, you know, that's gone in my arm, it's fixed me. I went, that was just water, darling. Like, you haven't actually had anything done yet. You just we just hydrated you and then we started we actually did a study on the ward i was working on about how many people that felt better once they were hydrated and i i started going oh my god most people that come to hospital are dehydrated you know and once they have that one or two liters of fluid um that most of the time we're giving them in plastic bags which is a whole nother issue i've got with the medical industry that i find fascinating and weird and strange that we actually are feeding people through plastic bags but anyway um we'll work that out one day but that was they were feeling hydrated you know and so most of the time when we're sick we're probably dehydrated or tired you know? or sometimes even depressed i mean that's the thing i wonder how much better our productivity would be as a whole if we were actually hydrated because I know myself I mean I I drink every house that I that I've ever lived in has you know the the filtration system in in the sink um and I drink a bit of water I don't drink nearly as much as I should and I wonder would I be more efficient and would I be less tired would I have more energy would I have all of these great things would my brain work faster you know come seven o'clock at night if I was actually hydrating properly and that's and what I'm doing with my um, clients now and the yeah. students on boats is that I will show, you know, we do a pee test and we, we check the pee for hydration, um, which is, you know, our main indicator for when we need to decide if we need to put someone in a drip clinically. And then, and also I love playing with microscopes, as many of you know, I'm a bit geeky with things like that. So, you know, if you look at your blood under a microscope, when it's dehydrated, it looks like a porcupine. And the more you hydrate it, the more nice and round and beautiful it looks. Simple. You know, I learned that like in grade eight in science. Um, and so what I do with my clients is we just work on, you know, I'm made, calling myself like a hydrationist or something these days because I don't really need to practice nutrition because there's a, a, a whole bunch of amazing nutritionists out there servicing yachting these days. But what I'm doing is I'm just hydrating people. You know, so people come to me and, and I'm like, let's play with this. Let's have some fun with this. What if just getting your water right fixed your dyslexia, your ADD, your depression, your anxiety? As many of you know I'm from last episode when I was on, I'm really passionate about mental health. And my vision for the future is, you know, I dream of setting up a, a stress-free retreat, you know, and um for for because stress and burnout are the biggest problems in this day and age and i've been a trauma nurse for years and i've had ptsd i've suffered that and i believe the more hydrated we are the more those symptoms disappear and some of my mentors like dr michael and dr corinne they have taught me that they are, actually have huge facilities in the states that are just hydrating children with learning disabilities and ADD and people with, um, you know, um, people like I, in my past life in Australia, I was very passionate about brain health and um, I lived with someone very dear to my heart that had a very bad brain injury. So mm -hmm. I started looking into brain rehabilitation from a very young age and it, once again it came back to hydration. So, you know, one day I'm going to have this amazing centre that, fixes all the modern day problems through just hydrating people, you know, and that's what I'm working with with my clients and my friends and just for fun now is 
is I just think it's messy. It's just, it just, just it's, seems so simple. Do you know what I mean? So like, I think, I think in this day and age, we've so overcomplicated absolutely everything. I mean, if we just went back to the basics, our lives would be so much better, so much more enriched, and we'd probably be healthier straight across the board. Yeah, absolutely. You know, go back and to the simple. way our grandmas did it. Yeah, and I mean, it comes down to our mental health, even our mental health. You know, we've talked about the last time as well, and um, I'd like to have you back again at some stage to talk about mental health again. Um, because it is an ongoing issue that, um, you know, I think we need to continue to bring a, a light on. Um, but, you know, if it's something just as simple as hydration that can make such a change in a lot of people's lives, you know, we, we fancy ourselves the smartest, you know, people or the smartest beings on this earth, and we can't even figure out something so simple. You know, it just blows my mind. No, it's huge. So yeah, stay hydrated, everyone. And um, if you haven't got one already, just get a basic water filter. Just, just do it. Your your kidneys, your brain, your heart, your children, your animals, your plants. Yeah. Everyone will thank you. They well, really and if you would do me a favor and send me a list of of you know just a short list, the water bottle that you would recommend. Um, the information about the Kangen water machine that you were talking about, a simple filtration system that people can use for their homes, like just three um, that we can actually put up on this interview later so that people will have the ability to say, you know, I just want the water bottle or I want to try this system or I want to try this system and it's recommended by you. Um, and, and it might make it simpler for people to make that choice because I know myself, I've looked up filtration systems. Yeah. And when you're inundated with about 150 different companies telling you that what they've got is the absolute best, sometimes you just throw your hands up in the air and you say, forget it. So if oh we could God, give I went crazy. people. <laughs> I yeah. ended up doing a master's in it, trying to find the solution, you know? Yeah. I but if we can give people just some simple options, then, you know, maybe they'll make that choice and they'll start taking care of themselves and the environment a little bit better. Yeah, maybe if I can help in another way as well, what I might do for the next week is um, on my on my um, page on uh, and on um, social media, I might just talk about these options a little more. So if people are interested and want to know a bit more, um, I'll, I'll, I'll put some daily information there and then I'll, I'll keep adding it to the thread underneath here as well. But to start with, I'll add on, you know, some of the best products, the cheapest products, the easiest ones to use, um, a few useful links and then um, yeah, if anyone wants to contact me and have a one-to-one -one or a chat about this stuff or ask any questions, then I'm totally available for that as well. Excellent. Thank you ever so much. I really appreciate you coming on board with us again. And uh, I'm sure we're going to be seeing more of you right here at Yachting International Radio in the future. Once again, Amanda J. Beaver. She actually works as well. Amanda J. Beaver uh, Coaching. Um, we're going to provide links in order for people to get a hold of her or follow anything that she does. Thank you again. I'm Ria. I am here for Yachting International Radio. Thank you for joining us. Have a good day. Thanks.